Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the village of Aurelia and Thea, the Awakening. I'm whispering because it's just such a nice, quiet night. You've got these little fireflies running around, a little bit of mist. It's quite nice, and Thea almost looks beautiful. I am Marcus Aurelius, and Thea is awakening. Slowly awakening. I think Thea might have hit the snooze button a couple times, kind of rolling around under the covers where it's warm, asking for just a few more minutes. But pretty soon, Thea is going to awaken, and the villagers of Aurelia need to be prepared for that. You know, the game is really pretty at this zoom setting. It's too bad you can't actually play the game at this setting because it's hard to maneuver. But yeah, so okay. I have been sick, so it's been a, about a week or so since I've played, so I need to quickly remind myself what it is exactly we're doing. If I'm still a bit nasal, I apologize. That will go away, hopefully, in time. So we have the Southward Hose. I believe... I think I was setting them out to get Elven Wood. I think I want to build an Elven Wood something in the village to start attracting elves. I have a cabbage patch and I have a field and all that combined is supposed to attract humans and I haven't got one dang human. I don't understand why Aurelia is not a much more attractive migratory destination but I guess we'll have to make do with what we have. So it is nighttime. Hmm. But we will continue to move. Oh, I think maybe we were heading to the smithy, actually, because we have... I believe we have one of our talkers in the group. Nazoth, that's right. So we're going to go try to swindle a water nymph. And I've done this once before, actually, on camera in my showcase of this game, but apparently that wasn't the right way to do it. There's a way where you can make the dwarf happy, make the water demon happy, and get the kids and I'm going to try to do that. We shall see. We shall see if I am capable of such greatness. Alright, so actually we haven't constructed the Cabbage Patch yet. We are on the way. It's going to take nine turns. Wow, that's quite a long time. But the pasture... Oh, I wish you could actually click on it and it would tell you what the bonuses are from building it. I remember I had a chance to get a human settler and a child every turn but I don't know exactly how many. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Attract human. So that's level two. Does that mean it's a 2% chance? I don't really know. And I guess this doesn't give you babies. I thought this gave you babies too, but apparently only fully grown humans. Well, fully grown humans are the best kind because... They do not require you to take care of them. And I think we're really doing well on the wood, but we do need it for construction and stuff, so whereas food, we're really kicking butt on the food. Crafting, yeah, we're still making fish tartare with this giant octopus thing on it. That's exciting. Yeah. Pretty good there. And we are, of course, constructing the cabbage field. We're using ancient wood. Is that doing anything good for us? I forget. I'm sure it's doing something good for us. Maybe it's improving the amount of people that come in. The skies turn black with the fluttering arrival of a swarm of crows. One thing I gotta say is Morena looks awesome. Now, Mokosh... Mokosh looks kind of creepy. Like, you're just like, eh, Mokosh, I don't really feel like worshipping you. You're kind of odd. But Morena, I mean, I hesitate to say, but she's actually kind of attractive. Like, I wouldn't mind. I mean, if I had to pick a Slavic god and didn't mind, you know, the whole death angle, you know, she's not a, not a bad-looking lady. Anyway, she hands you a map and simply states, Go there, make haste, or don't. It is your will. Be well. Now see, that's the kind of god I can get behind. I mean, I wish we had those today. It's like, go to church, or don't. You know, don't commit any sins, 
Or do. I don't really care. It's all good. Yeah. All right, Morena. Nice. So, and just from talking to her, we got some experience and research. Divine Quest. More fish tartar. All right. Well, we shall go there when we can. But for right now, for right now, I wish I could see. Okay, so we can't... Can, so this must be the water. God, what a freaking hassle. Let's go... We're just kind of stumbling around in the dark. It'd be cool if we could make some torches or something out of our wood. Okay, more fish tartar. I can't even see where I can go now. Might as well take out the hive. And I auto resolve. I'm going to continue to do that with the challenges. Someone suggested it, and if it's a challenge that I think I can pretty easily win, I'll auto-resolve. Because there's really no downside. If you fail, you just have to fight them. So, there you go. No one gets hurt or anything, and I got some amber and some experience. All right. Uh-oh. What you doing, Willis? We got a two-skull stack of spiders heading for Aurelia. That is not ideal. Nazoth has gained some health. Connor Platt has gained the ability to curse, I hope, and not a curse. Carl is better at crafting. Amara is better at traps. Artanis is better at will. Kalia's got some health, and Lion has tactics. I guess it's okay. I don't really need crafting on Carl. He's pretty much going to be on the away team forever. So, actually, some gathering would certainly be nice. I wish there was some way that you can control the destiny of your people and at least subtly impact the skills that they learn upon leveling up. In the village, Arcanus has plus one armor. That'll help in the battle to come. Hannah has strength, which will also help. Jeremiah also has strength. And Rowan and Mathies gain some will. And we have two enemy groups heading down on Aurelia. That is not ideal. All right, Jeremias. Ooh, we have a cool, flashy scepter. Uh, Matthews, well, Matthews could use it. Seven damage. This is three. Da wow, the damage on this is really crap, though, isn't it? This is two damage, six shielding. This is more damage and more will. But it'll kill more things. And she does have a shield. Her shielding's probably really good. 22 armor and 12 shielding. So if we switch out with this, 6 shielding is still is still okay. I'm not I'm not turned down by that. 3 armor, 6 shielding. Same. We don't have better armor to give her, which is too bad. We have an axe that does 7 damage. Two-handed sword, 5 damage, 5 shielding. I guess this is the setup I like best for her. And we do... Actually, I'm not sure if the village gives us any defense. We need... Oh, here's what I can do. Here's what I could do. I can allow the village to consume all the food. This will, as you can see, provide them with a ton of bonuses, and I'll turn them all off after the battle. That's a pretty smart move on my part. Occasionally, I have my... Mo oh, my goodness. Well, this could be a good opportunity for us to see what's in the stack of the spiders. Let's see if we can... Let's see if we can handle a two-skull challenge. Yes! And we got some spider silk. Nice. I like this. I like that we're good at brewing. We are brewing fools. Oh, and tactics. Two skull tactics. Well, Lion just got better at tactics, so... Yep. Nice. So we got a nice shield and a whoa-ho-ho, -ho, a big hammer. It's heavy, it's simple, and it does its job well enough. And some bones. Alright, so we're... 
with our different ancillary skills, we are able to handle ourselves pretty well. And we're going to stay here, though. And Aurelia was attacked, as we presumed. Now, the problem with being attacked, just so you know, is that you cannot use any fancy pants abilities. You can't do brewing or tactics. You have to fight it out. Blunt damage, piercing damage. I think we're going to be okay, though. We'll see. Oh, yeah. We got our most offensive people in the offensive hand and our good support people in our support hand. It couldn't have worked out any better. Let's do Blunt first with Hannah C. Oh, spiders are weak. Oh, not the queen, though. The queen is a bit feisty. Let's counter tactic. Nah, that wasn't that great. And we can... She has pretty dang good shielding, even with a 22 attack. Instead, let's put up Mathies. And... He is level 12 first action, so he can he can first action pretty much anyone. So we'll first action Mathies, I think is what we'll do. So between the two of them, they should be able to take out the Spider Queen before the Spider Queen even gets a chance to attack us. 24. We'll have... Oh, well, here's the problem. Shoot, she's going to attack this little spider... But then, she'll start the second round. We should be able to handle it. Although, I should have thought about that. The little spiders are of no consequence once the queen is taken care of. So what they should have done tactically is put all the little spiders out and put the queen out last so that my people would take out the little spiders and waste their time doing that while the queen could attack us with impunity. But they didn't do that. All right, here we go. Both malicious spiders are sleepy, so... Okay. Rowan is having a bad day, but that's all right. Now we'll take out the Spider Queen. We'll take out these two. Excellent. This was very good. That worked out absolutely wonderfully. All right, so we only have two. Yeah, Malicious Spider, I'm not too worried about you. And let's counter offense. Nice. Let's put in Arcanus. And shield him. And that should be plenty. Done. Aurelia has been successfully defended. And we have some more spider silk. And we have a wooden ring. Rowan took a very minor wound. Even without a healer, he should be fine. Although it would be great if we could have two healers. And the wolves, <laughs> they took one look at that. And they are like, screw this crap. We are getting away from Aurelia. It's not where we want to be. All right. More amber. Oh, really, guys? Why is everyone attacking us? Nice. No one even got hurt. I might be starting to rely on auto resolve a bit too much, but we'll find out. Here we go. As you approach the place shown by the dwarf, you see a girl sitting on a large rock, frantically looking out into the distance. Did I tell you I hate having options unavailable? It makes me so sad. 
When she sees you, she runs over without a second thought for her own safety, and speaks with a voice so soft and melodic, you cannot help but listen. You. You look... well, I guess you look like... hmm... you can handle some ruffians, right? Hello, lady. We've been sent here by the Dwarven Smith to talk to you. A Dwarven Smith? Oh, Baden. Him. But why are you bothering me with him? I have a real emergency on my hands. I had four children. My... nieces. Yeah. I was going to take them home, and I was set upon by a band of orcs. They took the poor little ones. Oh, what will I do now? You had four children. On your own. Out here. On a log. In a lake. In the middle of the wilderness. Why? I was on my way home. It's not too far from here and we thought we were safe. Now, there is no time to chat. You must find them now, and I would help, only I am so weak. These orc brutes have surely harmed my little ones. Oh, please help. Sure, I'll do it. I'll go find them, but only if you agree to go out with the dwarf. Deal? Go out with the dwarf? What are you talking about? There are children at stake here. Yeah, well, the quicker you say yes, the quicker I will go. Yes, yes, I will do as you say. You must go now. I will mark it on your map where I last saw them. Hurry! All right, then. All right, the Marcus Aurelius School of Voice Acting. <laughs> okay, this, the sheer number of wandering enemies in this game just gives me... A pain, man. I, I just don't understand. It's not necessary. Just cut them down by half. It's not like you, they're really challenging encounters for the most part, and you don't get anything really cool for beating them. It's just so unnecessary. It looks like we no longer can make fish tartare. Right? Since we're out of seaweed. So... This time around, let's make fish with, not going to use my herbs. Can mushrooms be used? In, no, they use in place of vegetables, okay. I guess all we have is ham. So we'll make some goulash. And we'll just infinitely do that until we're out of goulash. Or out of ham, I should say. All right. Oh, yeah. End turn. What's going on here? Didn't I tell you to do it infinitely, Jeremiah? Was that not my instruction? Oh, did I not assign him to it? Oh, man. <laughs> I am so smart. I am so smart. S-M-R-T. I mean S-M-A-R-T. Okay. Alright. Let's talk to some orcs. Please. Pretty please? You thought you were sneaking up on the band of orcs, but you lay there, observing. A female voice speaks behind you. So, the demon has sent some minions. I am surprised that you should serve her kind. Wait, what? You're the ones kidnapping kids, right? Surely you know that Rusalka is a devious temptress, always seeking to deceive and bait the living. Children are a favored prey among the demon kind. We've learned this the hard way during the long night. Yes, we have heard of Rusalka before, and yet this one seems very sincere in her pleas. Real pretty, long black hair, looks kind of wet all the time. <laughs> Her voice is all sweetness, and yet she's on her lonesome out there, wearing nothing but a skimpy dress to barely cover her bosom. Sound about right? You ever wonder how something that fragile wasn't even a tad scared of you? Neither of these answers are any good. Okay, okay, now that you mention it, it must have been a Rusalka. 
Well, there you have it. So what now? We're not giving you the little ones. They're coming home with us. Are they orc children? Why? Does it make a difference? You think we kidnapped them? But if they're orcs, then whatever? Oh no. Well, I was just curious if they are from your village, maybe. They are neither. One is either a very ugly human or a wee goblin. But in any case, I ask again, what of it? Alright, we'll do a social challenge to see if we can't have the kids ourselves. But, ladies and gentlemen, we shall do that in the next episode. So once again, I am Marcus Aurelius. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good one.